Hey everybody, welcome to the Luxury Sci Lounge. I'm your host, Saida Brown, and I want to just thank you for tuning in and listening to today's episode. I have a lot of stories, a lot of things to say, and I'm just super excited to get right down into today's show. So, you know, on every show, I talk about my luxury product of the day and then a couple other really hot things happening in luxury. But can I just say, on the last episode, I was talking about Starbucks' new holiday flavors dropping this morning. And uh, yeah, I was there at 6.05 in line in my car to get... <laughs> first dibs on their new flavor. So I got a venti peppermint mocha and it was everything I dreamed of since last holiday season. But can I just say, I paid over six bucks for that. I guess, I don't know, my grandmother, I remember I was having a conversation with my grandmother. I've been a coffee drinker since I can remember. My mother used to give me what she called coffee milk, which was milk with just enough coffee in it to be turn it light brown. Um, I grew up in New York City, so we all start, my elementary school friends and I, we all been drinking coffee for our whole lives pretty much. But I remember I mentioned something to my grandmother years ago, and she, <laughs> we were talking how coffee was 10 cents. <laughs> Just the thought of that, like coffee is 10 cents. Like, you know, God rest my grandmother's soul. She's in the next dimension right now. But if she knew I paid over six bucks for a cup of, well, I'm just going to say a cup of happiness. <laughs> because if you follow me on social media, IG stories, lives, all that other stuff, you will know that me and my coffee in the morning are serious. I mean, I have a whole coffee bar, um, the way people would have a bar of with alcohol in their house. And so it's, you know, when I get up in the morning, I have to decide, you know, what taste I want and then what mug I'm going to drink it for. Like, it's just this whole production. <laughs> it's just a whole production. So anyway, I'm super excited. I got a venti peppermint mocha this morning. And I said on yesterday's episode that that's exactly what I was going to do. And I did it. And it was delicious and yummy and filled with holiday goodness. So I'm super excited about that. Um, let me get into our luxury product of the day. And our luxury product of the day is Miss Jessie's new Feather Soft Curls. So let me just say with this product, um, with this brand, I had the privilege and honor uh, to meet Miko and Titi, the founders of Miss Jessie's at the Emerge fashion runway show during New York Fashion Week. My dear friend Dion, who is in Chicago, uh, D. Williams PR, big shout out to her. She produces the show. And that's when I met Miko and Titi. And, you know, I'm sure these women, th these wonderful souls, um, Titi is now an ancestor. Um, but this is when she was you know, alive and still doing a lot of events around New York City. I'm sure they, I was not the first nor the last person to ever come up to them and talk about our hair drama. I have a lot of hair, point blank, full stop. And I remember just <laughs> like literally stepping off the red carpet, just going on and on and on and on about my straight hair. And both of them looked at me and they were like, Saida, you have such beautiful hair. And it was like, you just wanted to kind of cry, I guess, or something at that moment. And I just went into this phase of wanting to always wear my hair curly and getting it cut and styled. So it was just a really phenomenal and wonderful time. And I still actually wear my hair curly a lot. Um, not so much in the winter because you, you have to kind of mist your hair in the morning. And when you mist it, it's wet. And then, you know, in your you're in New York, you have to wear a hat and then it gets flat and it just looks crazy. So in the summer, I am totally wet and wild. In the winter, I wear it a little, I kind of try to blow dry it, especially since I'm in the gym every morning. Um, but let me just say, Miss Jessie's new Feather Soft Curls, their new product, it retails for $22. That is our luxury product of the day. So get it, cop it, take pictures, tag Miss Jessie's, tag me. I already tagged myself on an Instagram post today 
I'm going to post it up on LuxurySide.com um, before the end of the day so you can see my curly hair and then you can see what the actual product looks like. So try it out. You won't regret it, especially for you curly hair, natural hair, head full of hair sisters like myself. Um, I want to get into two more things. The first is this whole, this Western movie, What the Harder They Fall is now on Netflix, y'all, a black Western. So here's the thing. I started watching it today, early this morning. I did not go to the gym today, which is the first time in I don't know how many weeks that I've missed. But it was because when I got up, it was really cold. And this has been the first really cold, wet, and rainy day of the year. And I just was like, ah. I went out and got my coffee, and I was going to keep going to the gym. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going back upstairs. <laughs> I'm going in the house. Um, so I started watching The Harder They Fall. This movie is well over two hours, and I did not have two hours to sit and watch it at that time of morning. So I'm going to watch it late tonight. So on tomorrow's podcast, I'll do a full review of The Harder They Fall. But can I just say, mm, that opening scene almost had me not watch the movie. It is shocking. It is jarring. <laughs> it is exciting, exhilarating, and everything all at the same time. And it just took me back to Saturday afternoons when my grandfather would have Westerns playing on the TV like all Saturday afternoon in a loop. And so I'm really excited to watch The Heart of They Fall. All Black cast, I mean, all star cast, I mean, come on. And then it's who the producer, Jay-Z's got production credits on him, so you know. I think it's um, done by Overbrook Entertainment, which is, I want to say, Will Smith's company, but I don't see his name in any of the press mentions. So I have to look that up before I do a full review on our next episode. So you will hear in the next episode my review of The Harder They Fall. But today, I want to talk about the crisis of meaning the crisis of meaning. Now, of course, I talk about luxury all day, every day, on my blog, on Instagram, on social, in my media interviews, um, because luxury is more of an experience rather than a price point. And it can be a price point, but there's a wide range of what luxury is. And so when I talk about the crisis of meaning, it really talks about how right now we're going through what 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 media outlets and, and narratives are calling the great resignation where people are basically saying like you know what f this i'm out and this f this i'm out could be for marriages relationships toxic situations places of employment like people are just saying yo i'm good i'm gone and so this crisis of meaning is really where people are just at scale saying, I've had it with this shit. I'm done. Like I'm out. We'll let the chips fall where they may. And this really resonates with my soul because I remember, you know, my children are almost five years apart. So I had my children at 18 and 22 years old. I was young. And I just remember going through the motions. I just gotten my two-year degree at the time. And I would have to get up and take one to pre-K and then take the other one to the daycare, then hop on a bus. I lived in Jersey, worked in Manhattan, hop on the train, go to work and do the same thing in reverse. By the time, like it was this, I, I just remember thinking one day, this cannot be my life. Now, just a side note, I was not a single parent. So I will say that, but you know, the burden many times falls on the mom. I just remember thinking like, this is not going to work for me <laughs> for the next 40 years. Like I was making $25,000 a year, which comes to $1,202 an hour. Then once you take out your expenses, your transportation, daycare, all of these things, then I had to pay taxes to two states because I was living in New Jersey, working in New York. And then you have to take deductions because at that time, you there was, biz, there, there was no business casual. You had to go to work professionally dressed. So my clothes had to go to the cleaners. And so I remember just thinking one day, like, this doesn't make sense. I'm doing all of this for 200 bucks a week. So I decided to quit and figured if I can make like 100 to $150 a week, 
I can still live because I wasn't losing much more money than I was already making without the stress. And so here we go talking about the crisis of meaning. I wasn't really in this deep introspective moment trying to figure out what's the meaning of life. I was just like, this is not going to work for me. And all of my friends were saying, Saida, what are you going to do about your 401k? What are you going to do about your future? You're throwing it all away. You're so smart. And I'm like, you know what? We may not have anything by the time we retire, but I know this life is not for me. And so I've been pretty much an outcast my entire adult life because I never had a place of employment to speak of. I remember my grandmother asking me, well, what am I going to tell people at church that you do? And I just told her, tell them your granddaughter works just like everybody else's granddaughter works. And But nobody could understand working from home. Now everybody works from home. I mean, my gosh, now people don't even want to go back to work. But can you just imagine what's happening on a macro level right now in a, in a mass scale way that people are just walking away from the BS that we all strived for for the last 20 years. Think about it. There's no trust in financial institutions. There's no trust in government. There's no trust in schools. There's no trust in colleges and academic institutions. There's no faith in the piece of paper, namely your college degree that you paid thousands upon thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, and there's no return. I was blessed to be able to live a life where I, my mother gave me space and freedom to question everything, much to the chagrin of my grandmother. Oh, that girl is so disrespectful. You let her say whatever she wants. And, and my mom really didn't. She really didn't trust me. She did not. But what she did do is give me the freedom and the space to ask questions and to ponder. And I really carried that into adulthood where I never felt afraid or, or convicted to question authority, to stand up for my opinion, to use my words, to justify my opinion. But I was vilified for that, vilified for that because people didn't understand. But here's where my challenge comes in, my, 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 my process of reasoning and logic. This crisis of meaning is happening right now at such a scale that I believe at some point it can cause our economy to collapse. Because if we have everybody questioning everything and participating in nothing, where are the pillars and support systems and support mechanisms? How will they be fortified in the future? I am not pro or against churches, the tithing, or the institution of a church. My father was a Jew, my mother was a Muslim, and I went to church. So I am a studier of world religions from a 360 degree perspective, and I graduated from an evangelical college. So how about that? But the point is, if everybody's walking away from churches, which historically has been on the decline for the last 15 years, what happens, <clears throat> excuse me, to these institutions that are meant to provide refuge to the sick, to ailing, to the poor. And, I'm, and many would argue they don't do that now. But I just think back at the beginning of COVID when, when Christians and other people of faith were up in arms that they could not go to worship on Sunday. I know a lot of people that, that and I know this firsthand, that could not get to church had a come to Jesus moment, no pun intended. And they're like, wait a minute, hell didn't freeze over? No, it didn't. And so now there was this mental weight lifted because you just couldn't go. Does that make you any less saved or sanctified or filled with the Holy Ghost because you can't go to church and give money and, the, and you're going to miss the pastor's sermon and then the, the, the usher planning board meeting? No, you're still saved and going to whatever place you feel you're going to when your time in this dimension is over. But when you have this happening in mass, like it's happening right now, what happens to that institution? Let's take it to finance. When you have people withdrawing money or not participating or engaging in financial, the financial constructs that are established, 
that these financial institutions can fail. And we see that because that's why they wanted to, they had uh, pending legislation where any transaction over $600 a month gets reported. Wait, what? As income, you're actually going to make me account or have the bank report my income over $600 because of a cash app transaction? Holy cow, I'm in trouble. My kids borrow money and cash app it back to me all the time. That's not income. But what's happening is the financial institutions and the government are making these knee-jerk reactions to, to things that, that they cannot grasp. It's like trying to grab a wet fish. And they're very reactionary. So we can't trust our religious institutions. Our financial institutions are on the skids. And now let's take it to the academic institutions. And I wrote all of this in 2012 in my book, Life Remixed. I think Life Remixed was my fifth book. It's actually my favorite next to Courage to Climb, to be honest. But anyway, I digress. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> What's happening right now in our schools excuse me, where children have lost almost two years of education. Some might argue, <coughs> I'm so sorry, get some water. Some might argue, <coughs> Saida, it's only been a year, a year and a few months. That's not true. We have to factor in the multiplier of the lost time over two summers. So schools were shut down for the most part, March of 2020. So they lost all of last summer. Last school year, 2020 to 2021 was held together with scotch tape and bubble gum. And then we had another summer, which every, every adult knows and every uh, uh, stat shows how, how kids, how much kids lose over the course of summer. And now here we are in the beginning of the next school year and we're still going over the debate and argument <clears throat> of whether teachers uh cafeteria staff bus drivers office administration should get vaccinated or not parents don't know are we having school next week or are we not do we have a bus driver tomorrow or do we not and so what's happening is this crisis of meaning is happening at such a level where there's so much uncertainty in the market that any financial professional will tell you the one thing that can compromise an entire societal structure is uncertainty in the market. And that is exactly what's happening right now. I don't want to attribute it to a, a, a president or our politicians, but I will say that our politicians are really not doing a great job at shoring up the instability that's in the market right now. So if you have parents, teachers, firemen, firefighters, hospital staff, nurses, doctors, regular mom and pop people, you know, real estate developers with nobody knowing what's going on, this crisis of meaning and purpose begins to permeate throughout society through all socioeconomic barriers, breaking through all socioeconomic barriers. And you have a society that's lost. And I feel like that's where we're going right now. And I bring this to mind because as, as a luxury blogger, it, it you may be trying to draw the correlation between what does this crisis of meaning have to do with uh, with luxury and, and how is the luxury market impacted from this? Well, I can tell you First of all, my position on luxury is that luxury is an experience more so than a price point. But I will say this, when people have such uncertainty 
about where they're going and where they will be in a year, in six months, in three months, where their children get into a good college, where will their their daughter-in-law who's having a baby, will they be able to go up to the hospital and participate in the normal things like looking at the baby in the in the in the little bassinet through the glass window and wave, will that be taken away? Well, if Nana or grandpa dies, will we even be able to have a funeral or will it be through Zoom? When you have this crisis of meaning flowing with blatant disregard for race and class, we are heading off of a cliff without a parachute. So my prayer <clears throat> is that you really adopt the, the place of mind that luxury really is an experience as opposed to just a price point and take advantage of life's precious and special moments and, and, and create little luxuries for yourself. I'm not talking about getting your hair or your nails done because honestly, that's hygiene. No knock for people that may feel that that's luxury. Um, I'm not here to judge, but that's really hygiene. I'm talking about trips, treats, um, and things along those lines. Look at where your purpose lies and where your purpose can manifest to do the most good in society. And with that, I share with you, always remember that we shall pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that we can do or any kindness that we can show to any human being, let us do it now. Let us not defer or neglect it, for we shall not pass this way again. I am so happy that you decided to take a moment and listen to this episode. Don't forget to rate this, uh, the, the Luxury Sci Lounge in iTunes and wherever you get your podcasts, please share. Please, if you go to my podcast on Anchor, you can actually leave me a voice message and let me know what you thought. Let me know what you want to hear. Don't forget our luxury product of the day is Miss Jessie's New Feather Soft Curls. I will see you at our next episode. And uh, until then, stay fabulous. <laughs>